Chapter 25 Little Mr Poonlot was really pleased that he would soon be going home. He was enjoying himself in Paris, but he asked me if I would write him a nice, uneventful evening and an early night, so I did. Chapter 26 The next morning Mr Poonlot crossed the bridge. What? It, it wasn't a very interesting night. You want to know what happened anyway? All right. Chapter 25 again he went up to his room, which was even nicer than the other one. He had an even nicer shower and then got dressed and went for a walk by the river. And yes, that was nice too. He went to a cafe on the island and had French sausage and chips with a big bottle of the finest fertleberry juice. Afterwards, he even had a plate of French cheeses. And no, he didn't laugh at them. In fact, he quite enjoyed them. Then he went back to the hotel where he found an even nicer pair of pyjamas and an even bigger chocolate mint. And no, no bucket of cheese this time, and soon he was fast asleep. He woke up to a much quieter sunny morning, a lovely view of the river and the cathedral, and a nice breakfast on his balcony. Is that all right? Can he go for his bus now? Good. Chapter 26 The next morning, Mr Poonlop crossed the bridge just in time to see a bus approaching the stop. The bus slightly confused Mr Poonlop. No, it didn't ask him to do hard sums. It didn't have an invisible driver. Nothing silly like that, it was just that, in the excitement of finally being on his way home, he couldn't quite remember which bus he wanted. This bus was a number 74. Did Fleur say that, or was it 47? Of course, we know, and if you've forgotten, you can have a peek at the last section again and see. But Mr Poonlop didn't have a copy of the book or the video, because I was still writing it. But he is a clever little man, as well as a nice one. So he asked the driver if the bus went to the station. Unfortunately, the driver didn't speak English. But fortunately, one of the passengers did. Uh, oui, monsieur, do get on board, he said. So Mr Poonlop did just that. I think you are petit monsieur Poonlop, said the passenger, pointing to an empty seat by his side. So do I, said Mr Poonlop, and he pointed at the seat too, so as not to seem rude. No, no, please to sit here, said the man. We are friends, I think. Then Mr Poonlot realised it was Marcel, the very helpful customer I had written for him when he arrived. Of course, he was not easy to recognise because I'd never described him, but soon they were talking happily. Mr Poonlot told Marcel all about his adventures and the problem with the French cheese farmers, and Marcel pointed out various sites on the way. It was very interesting for Mr Poonlot to see places like the Louvre Art Gallery and be told sensible things about them, so I won't bore you with any of it. So, Monsieur Poonlop, said Marcel when they were on a road with no interesting buildings, you are going back to England. Yes, said Mr Poonlop, nodding. To plan your famous seventh holiday. Yes, said Mr Poonlop, smiling. You have enjoyed your stay, even though it happened by mistake. Yes, thank you, said Mr Poonlop, politely. But now you return home. Yes, said Mr Poonlop again. Today. Yes, said Mr Poonlop, patiently. On the coach. No, said Mr Poonlop calmly. Oh dear, said Marcel. So why are you going to the coach station? The coach station, <laughs> laughed Mr Poonlop. No, I am going to the train station. I am going on the train under the sea to London. Oh, I am so sorry. You are on the wrong bus. Marcel explained that when Mr Poonlop asked for the station, he thought he must mean the coach station, the place they first met. For the train station, you should have waited for the bus number 47. This is the 74. Oh dear, said Mr Poonlop, who couldn't think of anything else to say. Marcel was very embarrassed and concerned for Mr Poonlop. Today, I think I am being a very unhelpful customer, he groaned. I am afraid your author will have to cross me out from this book. Mr Poonlop thought it would be a very silly thing to do, and I agreed with him. He assured Marcel that he didn't mind at all. His ticket would allow him to catch any train, so there was no hurry and no worry. And it was nice to see Marcel again and be shown more of the sights of Paris, that he was really quite glad that he'd got on the wrong bus. 
All the same, he said it would be very helpful if you could tell me the best way from here to the train station. Of course, said a very relieved Marcel. Let us get off the bus at the end of this chapter. Chapter 27 Chapter 26 ended at the bottom of a steep hill with what looked like a windmill at the top. The thing at the top of this steep hill, the thing that is looking like a windmill, explained Marcel, is a windmill. If you have no hurry for your train and are not afraid of the steep walking, there is a big white church with wonderful views of Paris at the top. I will walk up with you, if you do not mind, and then it is easy to go down the other side of the hill by some beautiful steps to your station. Your train station. As I had written another sunny day, Mr. Poonlop thought it seemed like a good idea. He asked Marcel if he lived at the top of the hill. I do not know, replied his friend. Your author did not write any details for my life. I must live somewhere, I suppose, but I do not know where. Mr. Poonlop thought this was a bit sad, but Marcel assured him he didn't mind. He was sure he lived somewhere nice. All the same, I wrote a very pleasant flat for Marcel just at the top of the hill, but away from the bit where all the tourists were. I made sure it had a sweet balcony with great views because he had been such a very helpful customer. Marcel was delighted. I am delighted with this very pleasant flat, he told Mr. Poonlop. In fact, he was so excited by it that he invited Mr. Poonlop to visit him for a coffee right away. But little Mr. Poonlop was keen to see the big white church with the wonderful views of Paris and to walk down the beautiful steps to the train station so he could get home to plan his seventh holiday, especially before I ran out of pages. So he promised Marcel that he would come and visit him one day and tell him all about his holiday, and he insisted that Marcel should visit him if he was ever anywhere near Akakakacia Avenue. When they got to the windmill, Marcel was in a hurry to go and see where he'd been living, so he showed Mr Poonlop which way to go through the quaint back streets. He told Mr Poonlop that the area was called Montmartre and that he would soon find a charming square full of artists. After that he should go to his right round to the front of the big white church. From there he could see the wonderful views of Paris and that would bring him to the start of the next chapter where he could find the beautiful steps down towards the train station. Mr Poonlot was very grateful for Marcel's company and all the help he had given him. They shook hands and Marcel hugged Mr Poonlop. Then he hurried away to see his flat, while Mr Poonlop set off through the quaint back streets. Sure enough, he soon came to a charming square surrounded by bars and tourist shops. He stepped over one of the bars, but he didn't buy any tourists, and he told me I was being silly again, so I stopped. As Marcel had said, the square was full of artists selling their paintings or drawing pictures of the tourists. There was a young man with a pointed beard wearing a striped t-shirt and a black beret. He was sitting at an easel, and Mr Poonlop thought he looked like a real artist, so he went over to have a look. By his seat, he had a board showing pictures he had drawn of a famous pop singer. Who was the pop singer? I'm sorry, but I'm not sure. But I have an idea. You can help me with the story. Think of your favourite pop singer. If you don't like any pop singers, think of somebody else. A, a sports person, maybe, or an actor. Or someone who is famous for making soup. Anyway, a man or a woman, it might be funnier if it's a man. Now, I'm going to leave five spaces in the story where you can shout the name of the person you've chosen. Well, you don't have to shout. But every time I do this, you say the name that you're thinking of. And then we can carry on with the story. OK, so you've got the name. Pause if you haven't till you've got a name. And let's go. By his seat, the young artist had a board showing pictures he had drawn of. Now he was staring at a young woman who had sat down on the stool in front of him and occasionally scrawling on his drawing pad with coloured chalks. After a while, he sat back and looked at the picture with a very satisfied expression. Then he lifted it off the easel and turned it to show the woman. Et voilà, he said. It is finished. It is brilliant. What do you think? The picture was very good indeed, but the woman was not pleased. There was one slight problem. That's not me, explained the young woman. That's a picture of... Of course, said the artist, I can only draw. But I assumed you were doing a portrait of me, the poor woman replied. That's what I was paying for. No, 
all my pictures are of said the artist you can see that from my board you're crazy she complained getting very annoyed if you were only drawing why did i have to sit here while you stared at me for three hours while this argument was going on mr poonlop noticed that another young man with a pointed beard a black beret and a stripy shirt was staring at the side of his head and waving a pair of scissors in the air this rather frightened mr poonlop he thought this might be a friend of the artist who didn't like people listening in on his arguments. And even though I'd said only nice people could be in this book, Mr. Poonlot was worried in case a not-so-nice person had sneaked in carrying scissors while it was being printed. After all, nice people did not usually approach strangers waving scissors in the air. So Mr. Poonlot started to edge away from the man. But the man with the scissors followed him, still staring intently at his head and cutting little pieces off a small square of black card. Mr. Poonlot moved faster, but the man quickened his pace too. He was staring so hard that he kept bumping into people and falling over chairs, but still he followed Mr. Poonlop. He shouted something at Mr. Poonlop. It sounded like he was calling him silly and wet. This convinced Mr. Poonlop that the man was crazy. Maybe he was from the insane river trip company. Mr. Poonlop started to run out of the square, but the man still followed him. As he ran, he continued hacking wildly with his scissors at the state piece of card, which was now a very strange shape indeed. At last, Mr. Poonlop left, left the square and the man gave up following him. But Mr. Poonlop ran a bit further just to be safe. In fact, he ran so far, he came to the big white church, which was just where Marcel had said it would be, and bumped into the start of chapter 28.